Hey guys, Adam here with RC Logger and welcome back to my workbench. Uh, today we're going to show you how to assemble your X3 gimbal. Uh, we've got a little series going here. The first video was kind of showing you what's in the box. This video I'm going to take you down the road of how to assemble it. Uh, this is a as close to a plug and play gimbal as you can possibly get. Uh, we realize the importance of that. Nobody wants to do soldering or anything like that or you know, jump through hoops to put their gimbal together. So we made it very simple. Uh, first thing we're going to need obviously is our gimbal itself. We're going to need our top plate. We have our bumpers. These are our vibration isolation bumpers. Uh, we have our uh, camera holder and we've also got our wiring. We are not going to utilize this. This is an aftermarket component for mounting your X3 to a different type of multi-rotor platform. So we won't need that. We also will not need our um, firmware flashing uh, dongle and USB cord. We are going to need our GoPro. I have a Hero 3 Black Edition here that we're going to utilize. And we're also going to utilize this um, live feed cable as well. We'll just put it on there and be done with that. So uh, let's move forward. First thing I'm going to do is begin by mounting my bumpers. Uh, this step is probably one of the more difficult steps to get done just because it's a lot of uh, tinkering to get all the bumpers installed correctly. Uh, let's talk about the selection of bumpers also. Uh, the red ones to me they feel a little bit softer. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, maybe they're the same diameter, uh, but I'm not sure. So I'm just going to select the black ones. And the reason I've decided to select them is it feels like in hotter temperatures, the lighter diameter the bumper is, the more vibrations can actually travel down and, and be seen in your footage. So I've decided to go with the black ones. I feel like they're a little bit firmer. Um, maybe it's just the material uh, that they're made out of but I'm gonna select them. In colder temperatures, it might be better to select the red durometer, the red um, bumpers because the durometer, again, like I said, it feels like it's a little bit, uh, a little bit less uh, thick. So if it's colder weather, the temperature will have a big effect on how the gimbal performs. So for me, I'm suggesting black for hotter weather, which it's the middle of August here. I don't think it can get much hotter uh, where I am. So uh, the red ones I would probably utilize for colder months, October, just November, December, something like that when you're, when you're trying to get aerial outside of fall. So uh, I'm going to go with these. Anyhow, I'm going to quit talking and begin by installing. So for what I found, the easiest method to do is start with the bottom. I just kind of pinch the bumper half closed and feed the end through. So it kind of looks like this. And I'm just using my finger to kind of get it started. And once I have it started pretty good, I can just push the rest of it through and grab it on this side. Whoops, kind of slipped out. I want you guys to see this in real time because there's really nothing easy about doing this and I feel it's important to show you uh, the right way. So, okay, so the first one's installed and I'm gonna wash, rinse, and repeat for the next five bumpers. I've done this a couple times, so I, it might go a little faster for me than it will for you. Uh, again, in previous videos, I've always mentioned, don't get frustrated, just be patient and calm and you will prevail. So uh, that's a good, good method to utilize here. And we'll just keep going around the horn here. Sometimes a little twist will help push the rest of things through. Um, whatever works for you. You can use some needle nose pliers, I guess, if you want, but these are pretty squishy. Again, <clears throat> I've selected the black ones. They, there are on the market literally hundreds of different durometer bumpers, and most of them follow the same sizing requirements. If you put all this together and you put this on your platform and you get some vibrations, some rolling shutter, some jello, and I'll go into explaining what those are later um, if you don't know what they are now. Uh, you can always purchase a thicker durometer bumper to help you isolate that vibration. Uh, these work pretty good and I'm also going to show you some other tips that I've picked up along the way on my X3 gimbal um, in another video. So that, now it's time to install my top plate. Now the plate has an arrow on it and it's basically indicating which way the front is. The front is the opposite side of all these connectors. So it would essentially look like this. You can mount this like this, no problem, but you could also mount this like this if you wanted to. 
Uh, the reason we have it mounted in this fashion with the arrow facing forward is the battery flap, tucking the battery flap in. This cutout here gives you a little bit more room to actually secure the battery flap on your Nova. However, if you want to down the road, you can switch this around. You might have to fight that battery flap to get it tucked in, but having this little tab here is nice for when you decide you want to set up your live feed, uh, 5.8 gig video transmission system. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to install this the correct way, but just keep that in mind. This tab here might come in handy later for installing more components on your Nova, uh, should you feel the need to. Uh, live feed is something that's pretty neat because you can actually see what your GoPro is seeing, see what your gimbal is showing you in real time, and that'll really help you to line up shots down the road. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, this is basically just a how to install and assemble, I'm sorry, assemble your gimbal. We're going to do an installation video later down the road. All right, you'll notice that I took uh, one corner and I started working my way down uh, this way. Um, rather than doing this caddy corner or anything crazy, you get this one through, then you have to fight the other ones. So I found it's easier to kind of go in a row and then switch over to the other side and go in that row also. Let's see if we can finish this guy up here. Okay. And we have three more left, so now I'll just start with this side and work my way right on down. Now it's important too that after you pull these through and you get all your um, vibration dampeners set correctly, you just give it a once over and make sure you didn't pull anything out on the other side. The last two are normally the more difficult ones. Get this guy caught in here, there we go. Finish this guy up. Uh, last one's always the most difficult in some situations. Grab and pull. Yeah, right on. All right, so now I'm looking just to make sure I didn't pull anything out from the backside. And my top plate is installed correctly, and that's a beautiful thing. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to installing the wiring. Uh, this is normally the most complex part of installing any gimbal, but uh, we made it really simple. First and foremost, I'm not going to need this JST connector. The proper connector for powering the gimbal is already installed right on the wiring harness. Let's talk about the wiring harness. We've got a number of different wires coming off of it. Uh, don't get discouraged. It's pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, this brown and black wire is for firmware flashing. We're not going to utilize this wire. Eventually it's going to get zip tied or heat shrunk into a sleeve and out of the way. Uh, the black and the yellow wire are live feed wires. There's actually a live feed connection that runs through the gimbal and it comes up through the controller and then it outputs right from here. Uh, so the ground wire and the yellow wire, the black wire is the ground wire, the yellow wire is video feed. This will plug directly into an aftermarket um, video transmission set for the RC logger set, it's a little bit different. Uh, we don't have a connector 100% released yet, but we will. However, I am going to show you how to easily modify this plug in another video to plug into the RC logger 5.8 video transmission set. Uh, and I'll explain why we're gonna select that set because it just works so nicely and it's about as plug as play as you can get as well. Uh, let's move on. So I have my blue and white wire and these are my uh, pan and my tilt uh, controls for my gimbal. Uh, if I'm a single operator, I'm only going to really utilize the tilt mechanism. I'm going to let the pan do exactly what the pan does, and it's uh, self-aligning. It's very smooth. It works really good on this gimbal. So I'm going to explain to you uh, in a later video how to connect all this to your Nova X because we have gimbal ports ready for you to use. And finally, I have the power and ground wire. This is a uh, HX, oh geez, HX4 adapter uh, yes I believe so um, if I'm wrong it'll pop up on the screen right here if I'm right you won't see anything this is the power in the ground uh, connector and this will plug into the balance lead of your Nova X battery so uh, again no soldering required here's our plug we have our pin line up I'm just gonna visually identify the row and where the pins are and they're towards the bottom and this will only allow you to install this in one direction you can't really flip it upside down and install it if you jam it in there and it's the wrong way you're going to break it so be smart and make sure you identify which way the pins go so now I'm going to fully seat that guy just like that 
I've got uh, all my wiring connected and we're going to move on to installing the camera. So this will work with, uh, I believe it's pronounced correctly, the Xiaomi Yi camera, which is a uh, kind of like a GoPro knockoff, if you will. Um, I actually have a GoPro here. I'm gonna utilize it. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. When you're mounting your camera, you wanna make sure that your tilt motor, which is right here, is to the left of your camera. You can actually switch this around. If you do that, it's not gonna work right, so keep that in mind. So uh, another way of verifying and validating that you're doing this correctly is the ports for connecting power and USB and micro SD are always going to be facing away from that motor, like so. So the next thing I'm gonna do is get my mounting components, and you'll see there's a couple different mounting components in here. These are actually uh, four nuts. These will actually be for mounting the gimbal itself to the Nova X. I have a, uh, a holding sleeve here, and then I have two pins. These are all threaded, so even on the holding sleeve, you'll have to start the threads. Let's see if I can do this correctly. Without cross threading, so start slowly. And they'll go all the way through until they're nice and loose so they can slide like that. And the same thing for the bottom one. Now let's talk about Loctite. In some cases, you will want to use Loctite. This is uh, one of those things where you do this at your own discretion. I like to be able to take my camera on and off quickly if I need it for other applications. I've decided not to use Loctite. However, if you do that every time you fly, you need to make sure these two nuts are tight. Um, if your Loctite uh, is on there, then you won't have to spot check it every time. If it's not on there, you definitely want to spot check that. Vibrations do occur and they can cause things to come loose. And the last thing you want is your GoPro falling off of your gimbal. So uh, keep that in mind. Now I've got them both started by hand. I'm just gonna tighten them down. And one of the things I wanna finalize here is balancing the gimbal out correctly. Now this is as balanced as it can possibly be. Um, however, the camera can become out of balance. You see how I kind of have it lazily in there? and it's kind of wobbling and it's not really true in line. There's a nice seat here. So what you do is you loosen up your clamps a little bit and your, your camera will also move up and down in this slot. This slot's a little bigger to accommodate the different Xiaomi camera as well. So what I do is I kind of split the difference with my camera in the, where it sits in the tray itself. And once I have it firmly secured, pushed up against the roll motor or the tilt motor and half the distance is split on the plate itself, then I finish tightening it down. And that really gives me a very accurate balance point. So I've got this hand tightened, hand tightened. Now I've got a gimbal that's sitting and it's sitting in every rotation, every plane I put it in. That means the gimbal itself is perfectly balanced. And for our last trick, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set up our live feed cable. This also powers the GoPro whenever it's plugged in. So you're not, you don't ever have to worry about your battery draining on your GoPro and then you're missing your content. So for starters, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this cable and I noticed that winding this cable, giving it a couple wraps actually kind of shrinks it in size and it prevents it from getting caught on stuff. So I've, I've kind of put a couple wraps in this. Um, what I need to do is I need to expose on the back side. there's some uh, filament here, it's just a, a covering. And if you roll this up, you get this magic port that opens up back here. Hopefully you can see that. And that magic port is what your uh, live feed will plug into. So I'm just gonna line the clips up accordingly. Fully seat that. And then I can plug this guy into my um, charging jack of my GoPro and that is my live feed setup. So my feed will now come out of my GoPro. It will go through the gimbal motors itself, come out through the top of the controller and is available now here. And we are going to get into that in another video. So essentially I have now completely set up my gimbal and it is now ready to install on my unit. Uh, so if you guys have any questions about 
installation or uh, rather assembly. We'll get into installation in the next video. You can always find us at support at rclogger.com. I'm Adam. Thanks for watching.